Hello and welcome to another review. I picked up this Box 7815 sleeper carriage for a reasonable price from a seller in the states recently and today I'll review this small but expensive wagon. 7815 was released in 1983 as one of the new supplemental wagons. It's clear that it was meant as an upgrade to 7740 from the identical color scheme, although it was never officially marketed as such. 7815 could be considered somewhat of a successor to 7820 mail van as that was discontinued in 1982 and the wagons are both full-size passenger style wagons. However, 7819, also released in 1983 and with the same color scheme, was a postal wagon similar to 7820, so I would say 7819 is more of a successor to 7820 than 7815 was. 7815 was discontinued in 1985 and had no successor in the 12 volt era. I'm not going to show the disassembled set and box since the box is simple and the set is small. The box is pretty standard for the large wagons being a sturdy cardboard box with a flip open lid. It's got a nice picture of the set on the front and sleeping car written in 9 languages on the side. The sides of the set also have some pictures of the set here, and then on the other side too, and the age information from seven years, and it has it in different languages on the other side. The back of the box highlights the some details of the set, such as the printed tiles, an interesting short alternate model, and uh, the interior of the set. Also, it highlights the new roof pieces, which were released in 1983 and featured in the set, and it shows a standard picture of the child building the set. My box has a little bit of paint damage in the back and is a little bit crushed in the front. So you can see there's a little bit of damage in the front, maybe hard to see on camera. Yeah, you can see the creases, but it's overall in quite good condition and I think that's a result of the excellent box engineering design of the 1980s. These boxes were very sturdy. Inside the box, you can see there's just a simple set of instructions. These are the fold-out type for supplemental wagons and they have the directions for the set and the short carriage, the alternate model. So you can see, it's a little bit hard to see all the instructions on camera, but they fold out to a pretty big size. You can see all the instructions, and then on the back, there's the finished A model on the left, and then a small B model on the right. Personally, I don't really like the B model. I think the A model is just a lot better. And also, if you're going to buy the set, why would you build a smaller model when you can build a bigger one? And in the set, the instructions also have the standard 1983 advertisement on the back. All right, so here's the completed model. I really like this model for a couple of reasons, and I'll explain them as I go along and overview the set. So I'll start kind of from the bottom. The undercarriage is very standard for the 80s trains. Um, I'm actually going to grab the first wagon, the 7740, and kind of compare it because they are very similar wagons. Uh, you can see the undercarriage and the bogies are exactly the same between both of the sets. Now moving up to the kind of the middle, the um, the defining factor of the 7015, is, in my opinion, would be these white tiles on either side. So they have eight tiles. There are four of the 7815 tiles right here, and then four of the bed design tiles. These are quite expensive to buy by themselves because they're only featured in this set. Uh, each tile is between six and eight dollars. So for an entire set of these tiles, if you tried to buy them individually, you'd end up paying around 70 bucks for these eight tiles, which is ridiculous. That's very expensive for these small tiles, but they're ex exclusive. And they're an exclusive piece and quite rare. Moving up, you can see that the design of the windows is different as well. 7740, the middle carriage, which is the kind of standard passenger wagon, has these eight windows, and the interior is also very simple. You can just see the minifigures through there, and um, it's got this the, the large windows all the way through, and it's got doors in the end, just like the 7815. But the 7815 has some narrow windows, and I think that's a pretty cool design. I actually like these narrow windows a lot. They're not common in yellow. You can see it's, they've got the standard door, the standard windows in the end, and then also doors. I would also like to mention that the set does not have any stickers. 7740, the middle carriage, you can see, has the DB sticker in the middle, and then the city stickers on the side. Same on the other side, of course. But 7815 does not have... Uh, that does not have those stickers. I think they decided that the stickers would just be too small to put on these 1x2 tiles. Another interesting thing before I jump to the inside is that the roof is different. You can see the uh, these 2x2 two two round plates are a little bit different. Between They're placed differently between these two wagons because this was an earlier model of the roof from 1980. Now in 1983 they came out with these new 6x6, six six, these double roof slopes. I can take one off here. And you can see that it's a large 6x6 six six double slope, and it's one piece. Whereas the 7740 roof, if I take that off, you can see there's two kind of roof assemblies with the 3x4 gray slopes, because the 
six by six double slopes were not produced yet. So they changed the design a little bit because these two by two round plates are in the middle of the six by six slopes. So the roof comes off, I guess, just by taking each one of these parts off. And it was, you, know, you can't really see that. And they have these grooves so you can kind of get your fingernail under there. It's a little bit hard to see. But if you build the set right on the bottom there, you'll see in the center. And then I'll also open the roof for Samsung 40 so I can compare the insides. I'm kind of using Samsung 40. The, uh, the wagon is like the standard for passenger wagons because it was the first passenger wagon released, really. So the inside is actually pretty interesting. It's very different from the 740 wagon. You can see that one here just has the five, uh, five very standard seats. It's an extremely simple design for the middle wagon. But this one has actually uh, two beds and then like a cabin with the, with the sink in the middle. It looks like to be a sink. And I like the detailing. I like the detailing in the set. Actually, they even put a plate over the two holes in the base plate, so the, there's no gap in the middle of the carriage, which they did not do in the 7740. You can see that there is. That's a little bit hard to see, but you can, there's a gap. There's gaps where the connection holes are in the base plate. So on the inside of this, you can see that there are the two minifigures in here. The set comes with two minifigures, and they're both on top of beds. Now these beds actually flip up, so I'm gonna. Hopefully not break the entire set, but I'm gonna see if I can remove this minifigure. And you can see these beds are on hinges, and now you can kind of, oops, now I broke it. You can reach your finger in there and flip up this bed, and it reveals that there is a, there's another bed underneath. So you can kind of put four minifigures on the beds in here, which I think is a nice detail. Now, another thing that is of note of these beds is that they're actually made with the light gray hinges, and the light, Gray hinges with solid studs. These are very rare hinges. Only the ones with three fingers, in fact, are about eight dollars a piece. The set comes with four of them. They were only produced in this set and in seven seven twenty sevens. They are very rare hinges, and you you want to make sure if you're buying a set, always make sure that they are solid stud hinges because they're hollow stud counterparts. They are not original to the set. They are first released in I think nineteen eighty five, and they are a lot cheaper than the solid stud hinges. So yeah, these beds flip up, and then you can see there's kind of the little walls in the middle here for the sink. You can see the narrower windows in the middle as well. There's one in the middle of this compartment. And I, I like that because I think it's a good detail. It's a sleeping car, so like it's meant to be a little bit darker so that the passengers can take a rest in the train. And because of the narrow windows, I mean, you can kind of use your imagination to say that like less light would be getting in the train. So I think that's a nice detail and it makes the wagon very distinctive uh, from the outside. So that's about it for the inside of the train. It's a pretty simple design, but it's got some nice details. 7815 can consistently be found for between 130 and 200 US dollars, depending on whether it includes the instructions and box. Used listings start at the lower end of the price range in fair to good condition, and typically cap out a little over $200 if they're in excellent condition, complete with the instructions and box. If you buy one, don't forget to confirm that your copy includes the printed tiles and correct hinges, as those make up over half the cost of the set. Sealed copies are typically around the $600 to $800 range. I was able to find my copy for $170 from a US seller and I ended up paying about $190 with shipping and tax. I would say that's a pretty fair price and was happy to avoid international shipping. Overall, this is my favorite supplemental wagon of the gray era. I love the design of the passenger coaches and this takes that design element and combines it with the specialty aspect of being a dedicated sleeper carriage. My favorite part about it is the printed tiles on the sides. They mark the wagon as being unique and certainly add to the rarity of the set. It goes with almost every train set of the era. It's primarily for 7740, but it can also certainly be run behind 7750 or 7755. It was even shown behind 7727 in a 1983 brochure, demonstrating that it could be an addition to freight trains too. It also looks great paired with 7819. That concludes my review of the 7815. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot about this set. I was lucky to get this set from a domestic seller and happy that it's in great condition. I'm very close to making a big layout, so make sure to stay updated for that soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.